And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacken or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Why, look at this from the Wall Street Journal. Women with MBAs. What's an MBA? Look it up. I know you don't have one. <laughs> you had an MBA, you'd be reading the Wall Street Journal. You wouldn't be listening to me reading it to you. Women with MBAs are twice as likely to get divorced or separated as their male counterparts. I'm shocked. The picture isn't much rosier for women with law or medical degrees. That is the finding in a soon-to-be-published study by Washington and Lee University School of Law. And that's from Professor Robin Fretwell Wilson. Note the three names there. Wonder if she's one of the victims. <laughs> the minute I see a hyphen, I'm out of there. Out. Says here, using a National Science Foundation survey of more than 100,000 professionals, Professor Wilson analyzed data on newly minted professionals in business, law, and medicine. Her conclusion? For women... A professional degree is often hazardous to marital health. Again, I'm amazed at the things people are shocked at. Oh, and get this, Professor Wilson herself a divorcee. Ha, 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 Plenty of time to study for an advanced degree, huh, Professor? A lot of free time? I'll bet there is. Professor Wilson says, it's like the Virginia Slims ad. We've come so far, but man, we haven't come so far. That's deep. I'm going to get my MBA. <laughs> she said, in a lot of ways, women aren't getting the same deal as men. Boo freaking who. Unlike men, she says, quote, women can't have it all because there is a social stigma to having or being a stay at home spouse. Mm. Again, th th doesn't this go back to what I always say? How about if I'm dating you, you live at your place and I live at my place. Then, of course, we can't stay at home because we have to go out to work to pay the rent or the mortgage or whatever. You stay at your place. I'll stay at my place. We'll get together when we each collectively need to get laid. And then you are off studying for your MBAs and stuff. And I'm back at my place banging other chicks, okay? I think it's a perfect solution. Says here from this article in the Wall Street Journal, much has been written about the growing opt-out revolution in which female professionals buffeted by cross-currents at work and at home are exiting the workplace in droves. And the topic of female success and marital status has been explored by others. In 2001, for instance, economist Sylvia Ann Hewlett, we've talked about her on the program before, collected data on high-achieving women defined as being both high earners and, quote, super-credentialed with graduate degrees and the like, and found that the more women earned, the more likely they were to be single and without children. It took a study to find that. 
I mean, do I really want to sit here siring your children, paying the bills, and then taking care of your kids while you're out getting advanced degrees? Why would I want to do that? What's in it for me? <laughs> of course you're, 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 you're single and barren. Of course you are. You're an old maid, you're a spinster, and that's where you're heading, sweetheart. Says here what Professor Wilson's study highlights is the large number of professionals, particularly women, who remain in the workplace but opt out of having families. Women with MBAs describe themselves as divorced or separated more often than women with only bachelor's degrees. 12% of female MBAs compared with 11% of women with only bachelor's degrees. That's not a big difference, by the way. And more than twice as often as men with MBAs, 5% of whom reported being divorced or separated, according to Professor Wilson's study. What's really interesting is how many of them never get married. Who wants to marry some chick who's spending all her time studying, reading, working? Who needs that? I mean, I think it's great if you're studying and you're getting ahead and making more money and you're, you're you know, you're working hard. That's great. That doesn't mean I want you as my girlfriend. I'd, I'd want a compliant female to be available to fulfill my needs at the time I need them fulfilled. Go ahead and study for your master's degree, if you will, darling, or your MBA. You go right ahead. But as far as I'm concerned, I uh, I need to get laid, and I need my socks folded, by the way. It's just the way it is. Seriously. It says here this study will be published next week by the Witherspoon Institute. Another group of women who have no husbands, I imagine. As a chapter in a book to which uh, Professor Wilson contributed called Rethinking Business Management. According to Professor Wilson's study, women with law or medical degrees divorce less often than those with only bachelor's degrees, but are still more likely to divorce than their male counterparts. 10% of women with law degrees and 9% of women with medical degrees compared with 7% of male lawyers and 5.1% of male doctors. Says here, Professor Wilson also found that female professionals abstain from marriage at double and sometimes nearly triple the rate of men. Of course they do, because who wants to marry them? Seriously. Sylvia Ann Hewlett believes more is at play than just a prevailing image that high-earning women are a threat to men. Suggesting that highly successful women are attracted to similarly successful men, she put forward the idea that such women, quote, can't summon up the TLC and support that higher-earning men need. Yeah, baby. Let me unzip my fly and you can give me a little TLC there, darling. There we go. Put your MBA on that. Says here, her advice, well-educated, highly compensated women should be targeting particularly loving and supportive men. Well, uh, yeah, what they should be, uh, I'll tell you what, girls, uh, since you're so wealthy and successful, you ought to be targeting the losers who can't find a woman. The guy who's standing outside of the Subway sandwich shop with a sign that says footlongs now only $5. Why wouldn't you marry him? There's a potential mate right there. Think about it. Seriously. That guy who hands out flyers on the street, he says, check it out, check it out. Hey, check it out, check it out. You know that guy? What about him? You make enough money for the two of you. You've got enough intellect for the two of you. Why don't you marry him? If the guy's got a high sperm count and he's willing to stay home and take care of your little bastard children, what are you worried about? I think that's an opportunity. I I smell an opportunity. How about all those guys I meet all the time who, you know, change my oil? 
the guys who pick up my garbage. I mean, these are all potential mates for you girls. And uh, there's no shortage of guys who will marry you, mainly because they'd like to get a taste of that casual you're making. Why is it okay for women to think that way? You know, it's okay to to be a part-time receptionist and to just keep working in offices where you're going to meet rich guys and finally you hook up with one of them. It's okay for women to be like that, but not men. Seriously. <laughs> uh, come on. So is anybody surprised by these findings? Is there something unfair about the fact that so many more women who have advanced degrees can't even get married, much less divorced. They get, they get, when they get married, they get divorced. Is there something surprising about that? Is there something unfair about that? Is there something bad about that? I've got to know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. To all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know. These girls don't love you. These girls love wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 free FM. SoCal's FM talk station. Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Jamie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jamie. How are you? I'm a uh, long time, first time. Thank you so much. Well, I got to tell you, this topic really interests me because it's near and dear to my heart. I am an educated woman with my master's degree and uh, have a working husband. We're both working professionals. And I like to consider us equal partners in an equal relationship. That's great. Yes, I think so. And, you know, I normally agree with about, I would say, 95% of the things that you say because women are, I think, on the most, most of the time, a little nuts. Um, but my whole point was I had a little problem with what you said is I need a woman that's going to fold my socks. You know, yes. let her be educated, let her be a professional, but I still need for her to be my slave. That's kind of how I took Well, if one is going to live in my home, I mean, no one is forced to live in my home. Okay, but well, what, 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 what if she was your, you know, like your equal partner? Like an, on an, I'm I not interested in an equal partner. First of all, I, don't, I know very few women who make as much money as I do. Okay. And or I contribute as many material things uh, uh, to a potential relationship. So, therefore, I deserve to get something in return. Okay, okay, I, I can see that. Otherwise, but... why do I need someone living in my house? Huh. That's a good point. But, you know, for, for my husband and I, you know, we do make, quite, like, right about the same amount. Pretty pretty darn good money, I would say. And I have my master's, he doesn't. I, I, I Like I said, I look at him as an equal partner where we share in our household duties because there are a lot of things that we could do. So... You don't. For you, it's not a good thing. But for other couples, what is your what is your take on equal relationships and equal teamwork? Um, I really don't have an interest in a relationship like that because they rarely exist. What generally happens is uh, financially, I put more into the relationship than the female, and uh, she puts uh, a lot less work in than than I think that she should put in. So now the way I have it uh, works perfectly for me. I do all the household chores, and I'm happy doing them because uh, at least uh, uh, I am not uh, waiting for somebody who doesn't contribute as much as I do to the household uh, to pitch in and, and do a little extra. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, I can see that. My idea think, is think... any any woman who wants to move into my place and be with me, unless she makes as much as I do and kicks it all into the till... I'd better be prepared to do some housework. And if she has no interest in that, then uh, goodbye. Yes. Well, are, I, and I, by I the way, is that just goodbye? You live at your place. Uh -huh. I'll live at my place. We'll get together for a hookup when you have time. Maybe we'll take a vacation together where you'll be paying half. And I'll be paying half. 
And that way we don't fight about how my house is decorated, what kind of furniture I like, uh, the fact that I like a big flat screen TV in my living room, <laughs> the fact that I like uh, brown and uh, sheets and uh, I like uh, black comforters uh, on my beds. Uh, that I don't like colors like uh, yellow or lime green in my home. Uh, you can have all that at your apartment, wherever you live. And at my place, I'll do it my way. And then we'll never argue about what time I'm going to take out the garbage. Do you know the last woman who lived with me was constantly nagging me to take out the garbage? Do you know that since she left, the garbage has gone out like clockwork? Yes, I sure, I'm sure. So, you know what? Uh, she's over there now. She has to take out her own garbage. And I take yeah. out my own. And who do you think is happier? Yeah. <laughs> you with all that money. <laughs> now, I have all the money, and now she has to live in her little apartment. Yeah. So, I hope she's enjoying it. I, I, you, know, I, you know, she proved her point. Oh, yes, I'm not helping out enough around the house. I'm not taking the garbage out at the time she stamps her little feet. All right, you go over, live over on that part of town, and uh, don't worry about when the garbage goes out. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you kind of nailed it on the head. I think my husband and I do have an exception to the rule as far as our relationship goes, because he does have the huge flat screen TV. He has every video game known to man. And, you know, it works for us. And so, you know, but... But, you know, but as you heard from this survey... Uh, women like you are three times more likely to not get married. Yes, so he supported me, though, going through school. So I'd like to give a shout-out to my husband, Chris, because he really supported me all the way through, knew I was going to make the good money. And, 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 you know, so now we're at that good place. But you're right. I think that if I was to go out and get that education and make all that money and do all those things, at that point, I, I might might have chosen a different path. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm lucky that I had the support that, that he gave me, so... But yeah, but you know, just don't knock the women as far as doing your dirt, doing your laundry, you know, I mean. No, again, I, they don't have to do my laundry, but they also don't have to live at my house. <laughs> okay. I'll, I mean, I'll that's the that. thing. You don't want to do my, I, you can date me without doing my laundry, but you're not getting the keys. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. You I, wanna wanna I have two beautiful that. houses in two completely different settings. And uh, I want, uh, if you're coming in uh, to my territory, you better be prepared to do a little housework. Otherwise, uh, I'll let you know how my weekend up north was. Well, what if I came into the relationship making as much as you, huh? Then would you share with me? Would I share what with you? The household chores. Uh, you know what? I tell you to live in your place and I'll live in mine. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, you, then you, you wouldn't have to worry how the household chores got done, would you? No, we, we yeah. Then you I wouldn't have an either. argument, would you? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And that's the okay. point. I mean, I am so much happier now living alone. And nobody tells me what to do. Nobody tells me how wrong I am. You know, it's amazing. The last time I had a live-in relationship, before she moved in, everything I said was fascinating. Everything I said was funny. <laughs> Every opinion I had was right, right, right. I, 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 and then when she moved in, I, 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 she never heard a word I said. She constantly complained about the way things were. Everything I did was wrong, wrong, wrong. I, I couldn't believe how, how stupid I'd gotten in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And so I, she had to get the good and swift kick out of the house. Now everything I do is right. Every woman who knows me says how funny I am, how beautiful my house is, how well kept everything is. I know all that would end if I gave any of them a key. Can I ask you how ed how far educated she was? Like how, far, how far in education did she go? Uh, she did not have an MBA, but she was a college, uh, uh, I believe she was a college graduate, yeah. Okay. Which so I'm you, not, by the way. I'm sorry. Is, is I am not a college like, graduate. Huh? The, the more educated like a woman becomes, the more nagging she becomes or the more independent she becomes? No, the more educated a, a, a woman becomes, the more she is out of the house, too busy, doesn't have time to make meals or spend time. When she's home, she's always, her mind is always occupied with something else. Now, I've got no problem with women being like that because I can be like that, too. But why do I need you living in my house? You know, here's the thing. If you're not living in my house and I call you on the phone and you're busy, 
I tell you, great, I'll see you next time you got free time. I hang up the phone, and then I pick up the phone and call somebody who does have some free time. Mm -hmm. If you're living in my house, I've now limited my options. Mm -hmm. And I'm stuck waiting around for you to have free time to hang out with me. That's true. It is very time-consuming. So why do I need that? This way, the way I do it now, if you don't have time to be with me, that's fine. Well, Tom, I thank you very much. I love you. I love your program. And I uh, think you could take me out with a bong token. and uh, thank you, Jesus. I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Oh, yes, shocking study that shows that women with advanced degrees have a higher divorce rate. And they're three times less likely to get married than their male counterparts. Shocking. Trues on the Tom Likas show. Is that Trues? Hello, Tom. Yes. How are you doing? Um, how, 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 you, class, how you doing? I just want to complain to you about your little comments that you're saying about people that have kids or bastards. Bastard children? Yeah. What, what about that? You're a bastard too, right? Uh, no, I'm not a bastard child. My parents were married when they had me. Okay, so because you said that when you when you're married to somebody and they have kids, the guy has to stay home while the girl's making the money, and the, and the kid is you, you said the dad has to stay uh, stay home and take care of the bastard. Yeah, kid. because I think in many cases these women were single mothers, and uh, they come into the relationship with children already, and they were divorced from somebody else, or the worse yet, they never married the guy. And then uh, the, 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 you're with the new guy, and now he's not only uh, staying home and uh, you're waiting for the woman to come home, now he's stuck with her kids, too. Question. Does your brother married? Is my brother married? Yes, he is. So his kid is not a pastor, right? That's correct. Wow. So now you call people that you assume that are not married bastards. Which knowing that they probably is, and you don't know that. So uh, now. Again, I'm talking about, uh, when I use the term bastard child, I'm referring to those who are bastards. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, assuming, uh, according to you, uh, my kids are not bastards because I'm married, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're married when you had your kids, they're not bastard children. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much, sir. And can you do me a favor take me out number nine style? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Where is Elliot these days? It's curious. My name is Elliot S. And I'm an addict. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello to David on the Tom Liga show. David is listening to our online stream in San Francisco. Hello, Tom, my Messiah. I tell you, you saved me from uh, many years of therapy. We think alike. I used to feel guilty for having a yard full of muscle cars. I get a girl with a degree over there. She treats me with contempt because I'm an engineer and I work with my hands. First thing she says after we get steady is. All these cars got to go. And so I agree. You got to have your own place and not not have to deal with each other's BS and just see each other with uh, good stuff. And you not have to deal with each other's BS or MBA or MA or any absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And they're looking for some guy who's going to be uh, the perfect ideal romance novel guy. But you're looking at this woman. No, no. Here, I, let me tell you what they're looking for. They're looking for a guy who will sit home, help them pay their tuition. Go out and work some job as a plumber or a sanitation man or whatever, and then have kids. You'll be the sperm donor, and then stay home and take care of the kids while these women are at uh, school uh, doing uh, dissertations, whatever they're doing. And they get mad. And then they complain that they can't find men who want to do that. Nope, I don't think so. In fact, even in Singapore, they had a government program specifically to address this problem. It's not just America that they had a problem with the women with degrees because their wonderful education system refused to marry guys who are blue collar so they actually had a program to encourage these women to find men who are quote beneath their station or mm -hmm. so they thought right so, so i think that was really telling right there well i think you're absolutely right and so instead of having to deal with this crap i mean i see women when i need them take care of what i want to and 
When I don't want to see him on the weekend, unless I'm getting laid, I'm going out back and working my muscle cars. That's I think it. it's great that you girls want to get degrees and you girls, uh, you know, are becoming college professors and doctors and lawyers and all that. That's fantastic. Just call me when you need to get laid. Absolutely. I'm not misogynist. I think women, I, it's great they get educated and they realize what it's like to work. I mean, does that make us misogynist? That's ridiculous. I'm, Absolutely I'm, not. I'm saying I'll see you when you can fit me in. But I, I just don't want you living in my house. That's why you are so important in my life, because I talked like everything you said, and people look sideways at me. And then when I heard you, that gave me permission to live my life the way it made me happy. Every day is like a vacation when I wake up, and I can do whatever I want, not her task list. Well, I think you make some very good points, David. I thank you very much for those. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be drugly. You've got to be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the <laughs> <Drugly>. evening. Drugly. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. 97.13 FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the like is show. At one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. We are talking here about uh, a uh, study that came out that said that uh, women with MBAs more likely to get divorced than men with MBAs and three times less likely to be married. Then men with MBAs. Oh, I'm shocked. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's your telephone number. Your international number, by the way. 1-323-520-6211. And uh, that line's open right now. If you're calling from any country on the planet, any time of the day or night, you've been listening to us live online right now. If you call this number, you'll get in. The country code is 1. The area code, 323. And the phone number is 520 520- Six two one one. This is Lindsay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hi. You know, you know, you gotta give yourself more credit. Even though, like, most of the men that you cater to men and educating them on the slyness of women or what women offer, some women like me actually listen to you and love it, and I learn a lot. No, not only about men but about myself. You know, and I think strong women, secure women, independent women, smart women. Um, what do we need? Uh, if, if you're so strong and independent, you don't mm-hmm. need us. Like, no, not not needing a man, but wanting a man. Well, like, that's you know, so fine. So, you know. so so here's what you do. Exactly. You strong, independent women out there, on the nights you're horny, call me and tell me what time you want exactly. me to come over, get the job done, <laughs> then I'm getting the hell out of your place, and I don't Too want bad. you moving into my place. <laughs> Too bad the ones I sleep with want more than what I want. You know, they want more. They want a relationship. And and in my mind, I'm like, uh, why would any why would anyone want a relationship why? with somebody like that? <laughs> some guys don't. Some guys want more and more and more. You know, because I believe the, when you give it, you give it good, or, or you give nothing at all. And some guys are. Just, I, but I love I love your show, and I got to give you credit for that. I, I do. I learn a lot, and I realize that what everything you say is true because it is true. That is exactly how women think, and women just need to be one enough about it and say. You know, that is true. I really didn't go to school more because I expect a man to support me and all that stuff. But if you're strong enough to do that for yourself, you'll feel better about yourself. You know, and if you feel better about yourself, you'll even give to the guys. You know, I go on dates and I give guys. I pay for the food without even batting an eye. I don't think about it. It doesn't hurt me. Wow. You know, it doesn't hurt because you're strong and you're secure in yourself. And and I think most more women need to do that. They need to be... Happy with themselves, you know? That's right. Happy. And and once you're happy, you eject happiness, and people start to like you and file for you. Even right. And then you get to pick who exactly. you want to be with. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so I, you know, I, I praise your show, and I love your show, and I, and I think more women need to listen. Not only hear what you're saying and get angry because you're attacking them, but hear you and listen to you and, and say, maybe that is true. Maybe I am like that, you know? So... 
I think that's right. They ought, they, they ought to look in the mirror and see if this is them I'm talking about. And it probably is. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you so much for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. Let us continue here with Ed on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, is this me? Is only this you Tom? Only you can answer that question. Oh, oh I like oh, I, that. I, I, Hey, listen, I've, I've listened to you a few times on my way home. I see. And you, 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 I've never heard anybody give such bad advice to so many people. Well, what advice have I given this hour? Well, I was, you know, I actually listened the other, the other day. So you're not listening right now. What's that? So you're not listening right now. Oh, oh I did. I just turned it. Oh, what are, what are we, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about? What's that? What are we talking oh. about? Oh, I, I, where you're just talking about women with MBAs? Yeah. Not, okay. And so what uh, does this have to do with advice that I give out? Have I given advice out this hour? Oh, I, I don't know. Don't you always So you advice? have... No, I don't. You don't? So let's review. You decided... I, I, I had a topic. I had an agenda. I, I put it forward. You heard the agenda. And you decided that you were going to change the topic of the show. Just... Oh, you well, decided I, that you were going to take it in a different direction than I had taken it. Is that right? Well, actually, I just heard a number and it said call in. And yeah, but I, I did not say. I, I said I, I asked you. a specific question and gave out the number. You well, Did you well, miss that? Well, I, I guess yeah, when I got in my car, I must have missed it. I was just calling to talk You about were just calling with your own agenda that had nothing to do with my agenda. Is that right? Go ahead and throw it out. I'll, I've got it. Matthew. No, no, yeah, no. You already heard. You already heard what the topic Matthew. is. What comment do you have about the topic we're talking about? Uh, I don't. I just. You know. I just. I don't need. Like I don't you. need a critique of the show. I don't need your opinion about what I do. Uh, we do a but, show but, like but that from you, time you, to time. Isn't it, isn't uh, no, I don't want to hear. I don't really care what you. Here. If you want to talk about what you think about me, there, uh -huh. we we set aside hours for that purpose. And when that's the topic, that's when you call about that. But that's not what we're talking about now. And you yourself told us that you know what we're talking about. So what you're saying is you don't care if the other four million people listening to the show are following the agenda, listening to the topic, responding accordingly. You decided unilaterally to attempt to change the topic of the show by calling in and talking about something that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Is that right, Grandpa? Oh, I guess so. Boy. I guess so, you idiot. I'm the boss here. Don't forget that. Get your own goddamn show at the nursing home, Grandpa. Get a megaphone and yell into somebody else's ear or the next uh, gurney. By the way, he lied to Dean and said he was 35 years old. Are you kidding me? Must be in the metric system. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Shay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I was uh, just kind of, I, I heard the last bit of what you were saying maybe 10 minutes ago about um, women staying at your place and what you expect from them. And I was wondering, do you expect this with the person that you... Um, expect to be with forever or i don't expect to be with anyone forever oh you don't no what about those of us who do though well those of you who do are misguided are misguided or like you immature lack experience are going to learn the hard way i agree i could have some disillusion about my future oh i have no doubt about that son i see you're 19 years old let me ask you a question are your parents still together my parents are and they have been since i was born isn't that nice it is yeah, well, they were they were married in a different era. They were, and I believe times have changed. They have, but do you agree that certain people could have um, higher moral standards than most? Do I believe that certain people have higher moral standards? No, because I we don't all agree on what morality is. True, true. I do see your point, but do you think that some people are are in a relationship to to find the person that they would eventually? Oh, I do believe some people are misguided, and we'll find out the hard way. Keep in mind, son, I, I'm, I'm uh, surmising you must be some sort of Christian. And let me just say this. 82% uh, of Americans say they are Christians, 
And 50% of American marriages end in divorce. So that means a hell of a lot of Christians are getting divorced. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Right. So uh, it doesn't matter what moral plane you think you're on. You're just 19 years old and you don't know any better. Right. I, I could... I know that, but I know... So you'll find out the hard way when the woman you choose to marry you goes out and has an affair on you, or she's got her MySpace page and she's uh, busy chatting up other guys, or uh, when uh, she gets her hands on whatever money you've been making, if you're making any money, and uh, takes it uh, on to her next relationship. That's when you'll learn, like, 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 like the rest. If I'm in the 50% that don't, you said... 50%. Well, those are just the ones who get divorced. Uh, that doesn't count all the people who stay married and are miserable. Well, you can't say if it, all of those 50%. I didn't say all of them. I didn't say all of them are miserable. I'm talking about the ones who are. Okay. Well, what if I'm talking The fact about is, the between who those who get married. divorced and those who are miserable and stay in marriage, that's more than 50%. The odds are against you. What if we just talk about those who are happily married and will eventually... Well, let's just talk about those who win the lottery instead of the vast majority who lose. Or the people that try to win the lottery. Let's talk about the people who leave their front door unlocked in bad neighborhoods and don't get raped, rather than the majority of people who do. Right. Ken... What if I'm just saying I am one of those people that? But, well, you don't. But the point is, first of all, you shouldn't assume you're one of those people any more than you assume you're going to win Powerball this weekend. I can assume if I'm trying my hardest to do that. Well, it doesn't matter how hard you try. You can't. You can't uh, account for what the other person is going to do. But can't you find a way? Make a way to find that out. No. Everybody who gets married, 100% of the people who get married, well, except for the people who are getting married to somebody because they need a green card or something like that, 100% uh, of the people who are in serious marriages believe they're with the, the, the love of their lives, their soulmate, and they're going to be with them forever. 100%. And half of them are wrong. So when you go into a relationship, you just see it as a month happy time for yourself uh, not a month necessarily but here's what i see okay i see marriages or relationships the way you see a tv series okay you'll have a tv show uh that uh, you know it's uh, been on for a couple of years it's had a pretty good run and then it gets canceled and another show replaces it right that's how i see it and i'm not i'm not being uh, facetious i really do see it that way and and i believe you i can and, and whether people admit it or not, that's how most relationships appear to be nowadays. Right. You have women using terms like starter husbands. This is my starter marriage, my starter husband. I mean, <laughs> yeah. son, you are really delusional if you uh, believe that the odds are in your favor. But I can live in the happy delusion that I'm living Well, in good, you know, like all the other delusional people. <laughs> and I'm okay with that for now. Apparently you are. Now, do you think that, let's see, you'll ever find someone who, for that short amount... I'm not looking for someone. Right. But I'm saying, with the people that you do encounter, and you do start relationships with, do you think there's anybody that you will eventually find that is going to make you happy, make you kind of bring another... Plenty of people make me happy. The question is, for how long will they make me happy, and on what basis? Right. And you also mentioned that you, you in the relationship usually bring more money, more material. I do. That's right, because women always want to date someone who makes more than they do. Right. Now, is it is it not fair to see what maybe what you're giving in material possessions um, compared to what they may giving you in um, not spiritual aspects, but more just feeling that you care for them and that they care what? for you. Well, well again, uh, you know, the, we still have an imbalance uh, with the material possessions that I bring in. Right. But Which is why I would prefer right people I have a relationship with, they live over there, and I live over here. And do you compare them as not in a... I would say, do you compare them as unequal to you if they do not bring... I don't care if they're equal to me or not. I know what I need, and if I'm not getting it, they can hit the road. Okay. I don't think I'm being unreasonable, for Christ's sake. 
The Tom Likas Show.